start this. Recording in progress. And resume the recording. And take the shroud off my camera. There it is. It's all blurry, but it'll focus itself. It already has. Okay. Um, now I wish I don't wash more boards because I'm kind of running out, but not too badly. Okay, so let's just look at the graph. You know, use base 2 logarithmic functions because uh, base 10 gets out of hand too quickly. Uh, higher bases are inconvenient, but we know what to do with them, okay? So we're going to graph log 2 of 2x minus 4. Okay? Now, I want to do this by transformations. Okay, well, for any function, f of 2x minus 4 equals f of 2 multiplied by x minus 2. And that is an f of k times x minus h. And uh, don't want to use K just because we usually use that for the vertical shift. So I'm going to use C. Kind of forget what your book uses. I haven't talked much about horizontal compressions, although you've done it and you've done it uh, successfully. Um, C equals 2, that's a horizontal compression. H equals 2, which is a horizontal shift. So we take our graph of 2 logarithm of function and I'm going to graph this without comment Actually, I probably will comment for the sake of people who still don't understand the basic functions. Okay, well, here's our graph. And if we understand the basic functions and how we invert them, it's very easy to see that this is the graph. Just to remind people, I'm going to write it over here in the margins, so, so to speak. R2 to the x function, we have 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, 4 for our standard x values. And for the log 2 of x function, we just simply invert the tables. And that's it. So, without further comment, and if you don't understand this, uh, and you certainly do, but uh, anybody who doesn't understand this, just go back to the basic function scheme. Make sure you understand it. Um, so, we have 
this graph. Now if we want to get the graph of log base 2 of 2x minus 4, well, for any function f of 2x minus 4, you have a horizontal compression factor of 2 and a horizontal shift of 2. So the horizontal compression, which we have to do before the shift, because the compression involves a multiplication and the shift involves an addition or subtraction. And by the order of operations, we have to do the multiplication first. And that transfers over without going through the details of how it transfers. Um, but you can think about that. Okay, so we have to move every point twice as close to the x-axis. So this point moves to here. 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 It's getting hard to mark these accurately. And this point moves in really close to the x-axis. Okay, so... Horizontal compression every point becomes twice as close to the y-axis. Now that's because twice as close because your compression is by factor 2. If this was 3, they'd become 3 times as close. If C was one-fourth, then you'd have a horizontal expansion by factor four. You'd move four times as far away. In any case, here is the resulting graph. And this is the graph of y equals log 2 of 2x. Now we shift this h units in the x direction because when you replace x by x minus h to get the same y value your x has to be h units bigger. To make x minus h as big as x would have been it's got to be h units bigger because you're subtracting the h. Ouch! Um, that was nothing. Just a surprise. Okay. Uh, my pet cobra sunk its fangs into my calf. Uh, no. Remember, this is my basement. Anything is possible. Uh, okay. Uh, now we're going to do the horizontal shift. Uh, so we've got a horizontal shift of two units. Okay. So now we need... Horizontal shift plus 2. Well, 2 units is this far. Right? So I can even draw my 2 unit vector here. And I apply this 2 unit horizontal vector to every one of these points. So, I'm going to try to be careful here. Well, I'm not going to manage it. But we move this point over two units. We move this point over two units. We move this point over two units. And, you know, I kind of knew it when I did it. I should have made this two unit vector a different color just to avoid confusion. I was worried about that, but not worried enough. Okay, so we take this point and move it over two units. We're going to put it about here. And we move this point over two units. Well, that's at one. That's at one. It's going to move it over to three. No, it's going to move it over to one and a half. And then this will move it over to three. And I moved it a little too far. But then we get the idea that the graph is going to look like this. Okay? So our red vector here
Now the word vector, as my linear algebra students or my multivariable calculus students from last semester will tell you, has all kinds of profound connotations in mathematics. Uh, we're not going to worry about those connotations. The basic idea of a vector is it's something that moves something. So this arrow just indicates movement by two units in the horizontal direction. And it should be obvious how that corresponds and how that was used up here. So now we have the graph of y equals log base 2 of 2x minus 4. Now if there's a color I haven't used, haven't used yellow, so I put something in here. Uh, don't have a lot of room, but what's the domain? Okay, I got some space here, so I'm just going to write out the domain. Well, 2x minus 4 has to be greater than 0 because you can't apply a log to something that's less than 0 because the exponential function can't be less than 0. Okay? And make sure you understand that connection. But the domain 2x minus 4 is greater than 0. So x has to be greater than 2. Now I could have done that originally, but I wanted to work this through. And we see that since this vector has length 2, and any point on the graph of the log function is going to be to the right of the x-axis, no matter how close it is, it's still a little bit to the right. That means the line x equals 2 is your vertical asymptote. Okay. In other words, all these points on the log graph are to the right of the y-axis where x equals 0. So when we move it two units, they'll all be to the right of x equals 2. And they get as close as you wish to get to the y-axis, to the line x equals 0. In other words, they're asymptotic to the line x equals 0. So this will have to be asymptotic to the line x equals 2. So I'm not going to draw it real dark, but I'm going to say that uh, so here's where x equals 2, and I, yeah, my graph isn't perfect, but x equals 2 is your vertical asymptote. So the graph of any logarithmic function can be constructed. Now this one has a horizontal compression and a horizontal shift. But we could put a number out in front here and that would then give us a vertical stretch. And we could add a number on to the end here, which would give us a vertical shift. Okay? So we can do all those things with the logarithm function. And all of those things could occur. There's another way to construct this graph. And if I've got a bit of clean board available, I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to have to move a few of these. But I'm going to keep this one. And I think that'll stay there. And I'm going to take these two. And move them down here. Okay.
Oh boy. Keep your mind on the task. Okay. Again, Zoom doesn't handle smudge as well, so I've got to be careful about that. Okay. Y equals log base 2 of 2x minus 4. Incidentally, I should blame that on Zoom. Uh, Zoom, some combination of Zoom and my internet service provider causes smudges to be bad. Uh, so I don't know who to blame and what share of the blame each might have. Uh, but it's not my computer because everything is clear as a bell on the screen I'm looking at. Okay, then another way to graph this. Well, same factorization where I got my horizontal compression and my horizontal shift. But of course this equals the log base 2 of 2 plus the log base 2 of x minus 2. By the multiplication gives you addition rule. Okay? And this is just going to be a horizontal shift of the log function, and then we just raise it up log base 2 of 2 units. What's log base 2 of 2? It's 1. So if we just take this graph, shifted over two units, the, the, the original white graph shifted over two units and raise it one unit, we should get exactly the same graph. Now it's going to look like heck, but I'm going to go ahead and sketch where these points would be because they're easy to locate. So my white graph would transform by moving it two units to the right to here, and then here, and then here, and then we'd have to go out two more units to get here. Okay, now it doesn't look quite right because I didn't have a great scale on it. Um, but this would be log base 2 of x minus 2. And then if I raise every one of these points one unit, well, how am I going to say it? This point will become this point, this point will become this point, and so forth. I don't want to try to do that, but we raise it Okay, we raise this one unit, um, and the graph ends up going through this point, and this point, and this point. So I'm going to have to draw it. I, I, I can't draw it here, so it's visible. But again, we shift this graph to the right two units and then raise it one unit and it's going to coincide with the graph that we got here. So let's just go ahead and construct that. I didn't realize that I was going to do this when I started. Alright, I made a bigger graph here and planned it out. Okay, so we have again a graph of the base 2 log
and as we did before we move the graph to the right two units okay, well there's our two unit vector and moving it to the right i use a different color here uh, we end up with these points so the green graph is the log of x minus 2 and then we move it upward one unit so if we move upward one unit this point goes up to here this point goes up to here this point goes up to here this point, which I didn't locate very well, but it goes up to here. And we see that this graph is steeper than either one of these. It's like, well, it's the same effect as we would have by horizontally compressing it. So if you compare this graph with this graph you see that it's in the same relation to the original log graph as this one is to this log graph. It's at least plausible. Now you have to kind of construct that yourself to see that it's really so, but it works out very nicely. If you do it on a very accurate set of axes and a large graph so you can do these points that are close to the asymptote, uh, you see that it works. Also, uh, the asymptote of this graph is going to be, again, at x equals 2. So it's kind of a neat little application of one of the rules for logarithms. where we can construct the graph of this function in either of two ways that end up being equivalent. So it's always kind of neat when two unexpected things end up being equivalent. Very satisfying to a mathematician, uh, to somebody who has no desire to be a mathematician. I'm not sure how fascinating it actually is, uh, but I hope you found it at least halfway interesting. <laughs>